Hey everybody, welcome back to Level Pixel Level, and welcome back to part 10 of the Night Rigging series. In the last video I added the FK arms, and in this one I'm just going to add the IK arms. So let's get right to it. I'm just going to hide all these shapes because I don't really need to see them right now. And I'll just hide the text editor for now. I am going to be doing some code in a bit, but I'll come back to that later. So everything here is going to be on the control rig. I'm not really going to be using the deform rig or the character that much here, so I'll just isolate it. One thing I'm going to do though is turn off shapes. I don't really need to see them right now as I'm working, I just want to work with the joints themselves. So I'm going to flip to edit mode and I'm going to select the three arm joints here, the hand and the two, the upper arm and the lower arm. I'm just going to do shift D and if I just hit escape, it'll make me commit that without moving it. Then I can hit M on my keyboard and I'm just going to move them to a new layer. These are going to be my IK bones. Uh, they do have a bit of naming issue right now. They have the dot .001 at the end. So I'm just going to run some script to rename that. I'm going to do bone.name equals bone.name dot replace. And I'll do FK with IK. So this is going to replace all the FK with IK in my naming. And then it's going to remove the dot .001. So it's just going to rename, it, rename everything nicely for me. I do have to be in pose mode to run this, so I'll just flip to pose and then run the script. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to add these to the bone group before I do anything else. So I'll go to my bone groups here. I'll add a new one, and I'll call this IK arm. And I'll just click assign, and I'll make the color red. I'm going to bring up these spine controls here because I want these hand controls here. Right now they're actually parented to this control right here. But in IK, I actually want them parented to the sub god node here. So I'll do that right now. I'll just select on both of them and I'll just select on that sub god node. Sometimes I find selecting through bones in Blender 2.9 tough, so I'm just going to hide the god node for now. Just select both of these and then shift click on this. I'll flip to edit mode and do control P, keep offset. I'll flip back to pose mode and I'll select this one here and I'll shift click to this one here. I'll do control shift C and that lets me add a constraint with a target and I'll do inverse kinematics. On the inverse kinematics, I'm just going to go to the constraint and make the chain length 2. Cool. There's my arm IK. I'll just do the same thing on the other arm really quickly. I'll do shift control C, inverse kinematics, and I'll just make my chain length 2. I'm going to add my pole now as well too. So I'll go to side view. I'll flip to edit mode and I'll just duplicate this up. And I've turned on snap up here to vertex. So I'm just going to snap it to the elbow, and then I'm going to drag back in space to about here. Now I did snap incorrectly, so I'm just going to grab them and just snap it over to the elbow on just the x-axis. Okay, I'll flip back to pose mode. Okay, so I'm just going to rename these quickly. I'll do it main arm pull 01 right. And I can just copy that name now and just move it to the other one and just change the right to left. Now in my inverse kinematics constraint, I'm just going to make the pole target the control rig. And I'll type the word pole in here and it should come up right here, arm pole right. Now it did flip again. Let's flip the axes back on and talk about why that happened. So again, in IK in Blender, the X axis wants to point to the pole target. So if I just turn off this constraint, you'll notice that the X axis by default is pointing in this direction. So when I add that pole target, it's actually twisting the arm towards here. That's just the nature of IK and Blender, is that that X axis itself always wants to point to the pole target. So that's why there's this pole angle dial in here where you can actually change that to put an offset on the rotation. So I'm rotating it by 90 degrees this way. I could have built this in another way, as I mentioned with my other, my leg IK, where the X axis was actually pointing that way by default. Um, it would have taken a bit more planning off the top. It's something I should look into on future rigs as well, just to maintain that x-axis on the characters so that pole angle can remain at zero, even when the IK is turned on. Let's test this out though. Cool, that's looking good. Let's just add it to the other side as well. So I'm going to do control here. I'll type in pole, and I'll do arm pole left here. And I'll just make it 90 degrees just to match up that pole angle. Okay, so these are both working, and I like the way that that's moving around. All right, so if I exit isolation mode and move this, you'll notice that nothing happens. This IK is not actually changing anything on the character right now. 
let's flip back to isolation mode and to connect this to the deform rig, I'm actually just going to constrain the FK controls to the IK controls. So I've turned this layer back on. It's going to be a pretty simple setup. We'll just click on this, shift click on this, do shift control C and copy transforms. That will add a constraint to the FK that'll lock 100% to my IK duplicate chain here. So I'm just snapping my FK to my IK here. In other rigs, I've actually snapped another set of bones between the two, but I want to go a little bit simpler for this one. What I'm doing right here, I could have done by code, um, but it's only like six bones, so I'll just do it really quickly right now, just across these joints. I'll just do this last one here, click on the hand, shift click on the new one, do control C, copy transforms. Now if I flip back to my character here, my IK is moving the arm. Cool. And I have my shoulder control, which is basically the top of the IK. So now if I move this, I get some really interesting actions with the elbow. And I'll just move this too. Yep, that's working well. On a side note, I did try some things where I put the control, uh, the chain length to three here in the IK, so if I just expand this. Um, when I push this chain length up to three, what it's gonna do is push all the way up to the shoulder joint. I tried that out, I did like it in certain poses, but I found that it was a little unpredictable. Um, it was working all right half the time, but I'd rather have something a bit more predictable, hence why I put this down to two. So what I can do here is just move the elbow, and then if I want to, I can just counter with the shoulder. So you can think about it like this. If I move the shoulder here, and I really like this pose, but I just want to tweak the hand, I can move it and not affect the shoulder. With that chain length of three, if I like this shoulder location, and I'm happy with this, and I've almost approved that, as soon as I move the hand to a new position, it's going to affect the shoulder. So while it is cool, it does look like it's a bit more automated, I actually just prefer to have this at two for now. But I just wanted to show that to you to let you know that you can push that chain length if you have a longer chain, like maybe a tail, or a character with two elbows or two knees or something like that, like some odd character, maybe a robotic character would have a couple more chain lengths. But I just wanted to let you know that that is an option on your rigs if you're ever just doing something with a couple more links in your chain. Last thing to do is just to add a control shape to this hand right here and the pole right here. So I'll isolate my rig again. I'll just turn these two on. Um, I already have a pole shape, so I'm gonna come here and go to my viewport display. I'll just type in pole. Actually, I forget the name of it, so I will bring back the objects. Circle.004, good naming on my part. I'll just rename this to pole really quick. And I'll give this the pole shape back here. I'm just gonna turn shapes back on and I'll do the same thing to this one back here. All right, because these bones are pointing up as well too, the shape is looking like that. So what I'm just gonna do is, if I select them, click on the God node, and again, do Control-Alt-A, it'll snap the orientation of this bone to my last selected bone. Now I have them in this space. If I flip back to pose mode, they're looking like that. Last thing I'll do is I'll just switch the direction on them. So I'll come to armature, and I'll do switch direction. Now I have something like that. Okay, these bones here don't actually need shapes and I can just hide them. So I can come to the shapes and just turn these ones off. I'll turn this one off as well. And I'm just gonna move them to a new layer. These ones, I just wanna give them a square controller just so they're a little bit different than my main uh, FK controllers. So just grab this over. And again, in my really complicated way, I'm gonna make a square. So I can select those and just do control I and just do delete uh, dissolve vertices. Now I have this, I'll just copy the name and I'll just plug it in here. So I want the shape to go down the arm. So I'll just grab the shape and I'll just rotate it by 90 degrees on the X. All right, let's bring back the character and see what that looks like. Okay, they're a little small. I'm just gonna grab them both, hold alt and just scale up the controllers a little bit. And now I have this IK. All right, let's add the switch now between IK and FK. So I'm gonna add the switch to the IK controller. Um, under the bone, I'm gonna to go to custom property and I'm just gonna hit add. And I'm gonna type in here for my property, 
I'm going to do IK FK switch. I guess it's going to be more of a dial, but that'll be okay. I'm just going to right click on that and do copy as new driver. It's going to be a fairly simple driver on this, so I'm not too worried about editing the actual driver panel. I'll flip back to my rig. I'm going to turn on my FK controllers, click on my FK bone, and just under the influence of these constraints I added, I'm just going to paste the driver. I'll just go up these joints and I'll paste the driver. I'll do the same thing to the other side here. I'll add a switch and I'll call it FK or IK FK switch. And click OK. I'm going to right click here and do copy as new driver. I'll just go to the constraints on the FK joints and just do paste driver. All right, let's test this out. So if I move the arm up here and I click on that dial, which is now in my items properties panel right here, I can dial that off. Cool. All right, that's working well. So I'll leave those off by default. I'll leave the arms in FK by default. In the next video, I'll just add a couple more controls to the face and then that finishes up our control rig. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as well for supporting me in this video. Uh, it's because of them that I can continue to make these videos. Head on over there if you want exclusive content, early access, and some behind the scenes footage. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>